Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the most highly acclaimed PC games in recent memory, marrying the best of video games with the complexity and nuance of a D&D campaign. And it's unashamedly a PC-centric title, with a dense interface and controls best suited for a computer keyboard. So it's not totally clear how well the game will fare on the new PS5 release. Adding to potential controller quirks, the PC build has rather problematic performance in a handful of areas later in the game, which threaten to disrupt the PS5 and its relatively meager CPU. Can the PS5 version of Baldur's Gate 3 deliver a credible take on developer Larian Studios' PC Masterclass? Or does the game stretch the limits of the home console experience a little too far? Baldur's Gate 3 has been available on PC for about a month now, and most of the findings from that version apply equally to the PS5 release. It's definitely a good looking game, though not a boundary pushing one, that tends to look quite nice from an overhead camera view. Up close you do see the limitations of Larian's proprietary engine tech, with lighting and model detail that doesn't always survive close scrutiny, but it looks perfectly fine most of the time, especially in naturally grounded outdoor scenes. Alex's earlier PC coverage is worth checking out for a more in-depth perspective. And that also mostly applies to the game's control options. Baldur's Gate 3 is probably best enjoyed with a mouse and keyboard, but it also supports gamepad controls on both PS5 and PC. At the beginning of the game, this works mostly fine with various radial menus and trigger-based toggles serving up the full range of gameplay options. Unfortunately, this does seem to become a little bit more cumbersome as you progress, as the full range of possible abilities slightly overwhelm the interface. This isn't a big issue for playability, mind you, as Baldur's Gate 3 is a strictly turn-based affair during combat, but I did find it somewhat cumbersome to traverse on PS5. And for those players who would prefer the traditional PC keyboard and mouse setup on console, unfortunately those controls haven't survived the porting process. From a visual perspective, the PS5 version mostly acquits itself quite well in terms of basic graphical features. It doesn't seem to really be lacking anything at first glance, and that's for good reason. It actually appears to be running at the PC's Ultra Settings preset, which is the highest set of options available you're effectively getting the maxed out PC experience on PS5. This isn't typical of most console games, but the performance delta on PC between the various settings options is pretty minimal, so the high visual target does make some sense here. When we compare the PS5 version against the PC version, we can see that basically every visual option is matched with the PC's highest settings preset for any given option. Some of the PC options have pretty subtle differences between them, but as far as we can tell after carefully comparing the two versions, every option is at or close to the highest option available on PC. Alex's optimized settings do offer roughly a 20% performance win over the maximum options with very little visual difference, so it's surprising that the developers haven't opted to scale things back a little bit more. Relative to Alex's optimized settings, the only thing that really stands out to my eyes is the depth of field, which benefits significantly from the denoise option that appears to be enabled on the PS5, producing a cleaner overall image. The shadows are also improved, though that tends to be more subtle. In any case, Baldur's Gate 3 isn't a particularly heavy game even on mid-range GPUs, and as we'll see later, the PS5 doesn't seem to have too many issues with GPU-bound performance. In terms of image quality, we have two options on display. Amusingly, simply a toggle to turn performance on or off, which effectively gives us a performance and quality mode in this title. Both offer the same visual settings, and both target 1440p according to the game. So does this hold up in practice? Pixel counts reveal that the quality mode does indeed clock in at a native 1440p. In every shot I tested, I counted a straight 1440, without any signs of reconstruction or dynamic resolution. The performance mode looks a lot like the quality mode and resolves about as much detail in still shots, but it has some extra artifacting namely ghosting trails on foliage and some fizzling artifacts in some areas of fine detail that suggest a certain upsampling method is in use. 
FSR2's typical visual artifacts are in play here, and Larian has suggested that FSR2 integration is planned for the PC release, so it makes the most sense as an upsampling solution on PS5. I believe the game is using FSR2 to hit a 1440p output, upsampled from roughly a 960p internal resolution, which would correspond to FSR2's quality mode. Again, there could be some dynamic resolution in effect, but if so, it's not common. In actual gameplay, the quality and performance modes look very similar with the exception of the aforementioned minor issues in performance mode. I think both hold up perfectly well on a 4K television set from a typical viewing distance, though up close you will see a bit of softness in the image. From a visual perspective, Baldur's Gate 3 is a pretty good experience on PS5 hardware. But what about the game's frame rates? The game's performance mode targets 60 FPS, and for the most part, it does seem to reach that target. Interior areas and most of the game's exterior landscapes run just fine at 60, including combat scenes. I did notice that certain cutscenes do seem to run beneath this target, but these moments are pretty fleeting. The grove area in the first act also sees some little dips when you walk around. Nothing too severe, but worth noting. But there are areas that don't fare quite as well. Namely, the city area from the game's third act is much, much heavier than the areas from the first act that we sampled, with performance dropping into the low 20s at worst. As far as I can tell, these issues probably shouldn't arise before this section, as the many hours of gameplay that precede it don't feature large NPC-dense cities like this. It's also worth noting the tearing here. Baldur's Gate 3 has some tearing in roughly the top 20% of the screen during typical gameplay when the frame rate is dropping below 60 FPS, on the order of a few frames every second or so. It's a little bit annoying to be sure, but it does preserve a bit of input response at the expense of hurting image quality. For a turn-based game like this, I probably would have elected to just hold V-Sync regardless, but this is a choice that developers sometimes do make. But there's another tearing issue at hand, and it's one we haven't seen in a while. A small portion of the screen at the bottom of the frame suffers from near constant tearing when the game is dropping frames. The game seems to be flipping its frame buffer early, essentially producing more tearing than we would otherwise typically see in a game that's trying to limit screen tearing to a small screen area. I suspect this is probably a bug as it looks quite unsightly once you do notice it. Baldur's Gate 3 also has a quality mode, of course, and this is where the game's performance does firm up quite a bit. The new frame rate target here is 30 FPS, and the game does an excellent job of hitting that figure. I couldn't seem to provoke any issues in Act 1 at all, as the game proceeds at a locked 30 FPS, regardless of what I throw at it. My only real complaint here is the complete lack of motion blur, which makes the 30 FPS update feel a bit choppier than it probably should. But Act 3 again poses certain issues. Around this NPC-dense archway, we see frame rates again drop to the mid to low 20s, with highly inconsistent animation. Other parts of the city also provoke drops, though not quite as severe. For whatever reason, Larian has opted to retain V-Sync here, unlike the performance mode, so there is no screen tearing whatsoever, even when the frame rates are low. Running the performance and quality mode frame rate readouts back to back, I strongly suspect that the game is severely CPU limited in this Act 3 area. There's virtually no difference in frame rates, suggesting that there is a CPU bottleneck in both visual modes. This also tracks with our testing of the PC version, which suffers from heavily CPU bound performance in this area. There is another way to play Baldur's Gate 3, and that's the game's split screen gameplay mode. Here, the game renders at 1440p natively, just like in the quality mode. Technically, this image is split in half vertically in split screen, giving each player an effective 1280 by 1440 resolution during gameplay. It does feel a bit cramped, but it mostly works all right. In terms of visual settings, split screen does seem to come close to the ultra settings preset. I did spot noticeably reduced shadow quality in a few shots, though the difference was pretty slight. It's possible that other settings take a hit too, but if so, any cutbacks are quite minor. 
I tried to break the split screen mode by moving one character as far as possible from the other one while leaving the other character totally stationary and for the most part there were no issues. I did notice that the shadows on my stationary character became progressively degraded and simplified the further I moved away, but everything else held up just fine. In split screen, the performance figures are largely the same as in the quality mode. That means a pretty stable 30 FPS during gameplay for the most part, outside of the somewhat calamitous city area in Act 3. In the most demanding section here, we're again hovering around the low 20s. That means that split screen players don't take any big performance compromise relative to single player play. But I wouldn't say the game's performance is uniformly good here. I'm not sure that Baldur's Gate 3 is a particularly compelling split screen experience given its slow pace and single player oriented structure, but the PS5 does deliver a pretty decent split screen implementation in this title, with minimal compromises relative to the single player experience. Baldur's Gate 3 works quite well on PS5. As long as you can get over any controller hangups, the game performs reasonably on Sony's current gen console, at least relative to what we see from mid-range PCs in this particular title. But the game's underlying performance issues haven't been solved for this release, and we end up being badly CPU bound in some areas. Expect to see substantially lower frame rates than a PC with an older mid-range CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600, at least when the game is suffering heavy CPU stress. Thankfully, that isn't the case for the majority of the experience, as far as I can tell, and in more sedate areas, the game runs with a reasonably consistent 60 FPS or a rock solid 30 FPS, depending on the visual mode you select. Split screen also arrives without substantial compromise, which is a welcome surprise given the issues the developers seem to have had translating a version of that mode to Series S. For gamers without access to a high-end PC, the PS5 version of Baldur's Gate 3 just about does the job, but Larian Studios still has some ways to go to bring the entire game up to a performant level on mid-range PCs and consoles. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch, use social media. Thanks for watching.